Hey guys, Clint here with Classic Firearms coming at you guys today from the bunker with yet another debatable topic. And let's just go ahead and hop right into it. 6.5 Creedmoor. Is it the future? Is it the now? Is it pretty much the new 7.62 NATO? So what I've got guys is our ever so popular 308 Winchester 7.62 NATO. Uh, similar, you know, how they look and all that stuff like that. And one of the 6.5 Creedmoor. Just want to show these off to you really quick. Because even though this one has a larger projectile, 7.62, compared to 6.5, look at how much powder is behind this guy right here. Nuts. This thing is moving, all right? Now, the two that I have right here are both full metal jacket, boat tail, uh, projectiles and this one here is coming in at 140 grain I think it is on this guy where the heck does it say it on the box here we go 140 grain on the 6.5 and on the 308 we've got 147 so try to get them as pretty much similar as possible uh, just to take a look so with this one here being 140 grain we're gonna go ahead and talk about muzzle velocity all right now Granted, you can get different weights of bullets out there a little bit later, which is a light later, right? A little bit lighter, which is ultimately going to force the bullet out faster, right? All those hot gases and everything that are pushing that bullet out, you know, the burnt powder pretty much, all of that's just pushing that bullet out of the barrel as fast as it can. And if it's a lighter projectile, it's able to push it out faster. Kind of makes sense, right? If it's a heavier projectile, it's gonna push it out slower. All right, cool. That kind of makes sense in my mind. So if it being a lighter projectile is moving out the barrel faster, that's going to give you a higher muzzle velocity versus something a little bit heavier, okay? So I know that there are some grain weights out there. In fact, I think I have it pulled up right here. Like for instance, there's 120 grain that is moving at 3,020 feet per second. That's fast, guys. We're talking about pretty much defeating body armor at that point, all right? Because think about it, most of your steel, AR-500, things like that, it says do not shoot with over, you know, shooting a, don't shoot at it with, God dang it, don't shoot at it over, <laughs> Don't hit their targets with a projectile moving faster than 3,000 feet per second. And that's because speed is what typically defeats armor and things like that and, you know, bulletproof stuff, all right? Uh, we learned that with uh, our friends at Premier Body Armor. So then they've got 143 grain that's moving about 2,700 feet per second, but the one that we have today being 140 grain, which is a little bit heavier, the muzzle velocity on this guy is right at 26,000, 26,000, right? That'd be super fast. 26 157, so 2657, according to the box there, right? And that's for that little guy, okay? Now, the 308 that I have right here, 147 grain 308, this guy's moving at 2780, so pretty comparable right there. Well, what did I say this one was again? 2657. So, you know, pretty close as far as muzzle velocity between these two. Now, the 6.5 Creedmoor cartridge has actually been around since 2007. That's when it was originally designed. It's been produced uh, since 2008 to present day. And within the last couple of years, uh, Department of Defense and a couple of other, these uh, three-letter agencies and other you know parts of government are actually starting to transition away from the 7.62 NATO and going towards the 6.5 Creedmoor. Why is that? Well, first off, I think this round is easier to control. Actually, it's a heck of a lot of fun to shoot. You know what, it's so fun to shoot. Remember that Nemo that we gave away? Oh, the executive order? If you don't, let's remind you really quick.
light recoiling and a heck of a lot of fun guys. So we took that Nemo and shot it at about only 100 yards, which is well within the capabilities of the 6.5 Creedmoor round. This guy here can move probably past 1,000 yards easily. 7.62 NATO starts to drop off pretty soon if you think. If it's inside 600 yards, I think 7.62 NATO's got it. Uh, but reaching out past that, while doable, you start to kind of lose that momentum and all the stuff that, you know, <laughs> I pretty much lose the oomph behind it, right? So this guy here, 6.5 Creedmoor, man, when we shot this guy at 100 yards, it just ding, ding, and it was hitting our still targets hard. I mean, you can hear that impact, you know, just whap, you know, just slapping the heck out of those targets when they got hit. Now, granted, that's not a scientific, you know, experiment or anything like that. That's just, wow, that thing is really hitting hard compared to 5.56 five, or anything like that. You can just kind of hear the difference almost, and it was pretty crazy, really. So anyway, the 6.5 Creedmoor, Heck of a lot of fun to shoot. Recoil is super light compared to the 7.62 NATO. And so it kind of makes sense to me why the, you know, some military and different agencies are starting to transition over to 6.5 Creed more because apparently it's a more accurate round. It's got better, faster muzzle velocity in some cases. And they don't have to change out a whole lot on their already you know, service rifles, if you will. So for instance, the 7.62 NATO and the 6.5 Creedmoor pretty much share the same magazine and all you have to really switch out now is just the barrel because they also share the same bolts and things like that. So pretty easy to shoot this guy and start transitioning more to this guy here without having to do an entire replacement of a firearm. Cost effectiveness, that's, that's a big thing there. Now, cost effectiveness to us on the commercial market. Hmm, that's where things start getting a little tricky because you have had this round that's been produced for a very long time now, ever since pretty much the inception of NATO in the uh, late 40s, right? So it's kind of like, wow, this guy's been around for a long time. There are a heck of a lot, well, this is just a lot more available than what you could find with 6.5 Creedmoor. It's also a little bit more cost efficient for us down here, right? So. Yeah, that's when things start getting kind of funny. For a majority of us shooters, I think pretty much what the answer here is, for our long range competitor shooters, yeah, I think you're gonna find this guy to be more up your alley. And when I say long range, I mean, yeah, you're pushing a thousand yards, okay? For most of us that are reaching out maybe to 500 yards at your local range, if that's what you have available to you, I think you're gonna find that this guy right here is gonna be just completely capable. And 7.62 NATO has been my favorite cartridge for a long time. 6.5 Creedmoor, I'm, I'm, I'm almost got it, you know, I'm almost there. I don't know, you know, I don't know. So cost effectiveness for us, yes, you've got it right here. Ballistic capabilities, after the DOD and all these other people have started doing their things, apparently this guy right here has better ballistic capabilities outside of that 600 yards with the 7.62 NATO, okay? So, all right, gotcha. However, this guy's also much lighter recoiling. This one, this one recoils quite a bit. I mean, it's not, you know, anything you couldn't handle. I know plenty of new shooters that have picked up an M14 and shot it and like, oh, this is awesome, I love it. Cool, it's kind of, you know, so it's kind of like that. I would compare it shooting a 5.56 to a 7.62 NATO, you know, kind of like how you would compare this to shooting a 7.62 NATO. This guy is super light recoiling and actually recoils lighter than some of my ARs that are chambered in 5.56, I imagine that. So, super light recoiling, a little bit more expensive, maybe not as available, uh, not as expensive, a little bit more available, well, maybe in this current market, uh, depending on when you're watching this video. As of right now, ammo is like crazy right now. Precious metals I'm holding right here. Uh, so anyway, take that with you know what you will. But anyway, a little bit more available traditionally than what 6.5 Creedmoor is and a little bit heavier recoiling. But the ballistic capabilities all within, I would say 500 yards, I don't think you're getting much more with this guy. I don't know. But then again, I'm also not an expert here. I am just throwing the discussion out there for you guys 
to talk about because I'm curious. So let me know down in the comments what you think. You guys educate me. I just want to start, I just want to be the guy that stirs the pot and starts the discussion, all right? I actually learn a lot from our viewers, from all of you guys, so appreciate all of your input, especially whenever it's, you know, <laughs> productive and positive. That's always great. There are some of you out there who just, you know, you, you do your own thing and Thanks for contributing. Thanks for the views, I guess. But anyway, so yeah, I want to hear from you guys. 762NATO versus 65 Creedmoor. Uh, or if I got, you know, I don't know, fill me in with some more facts, you know? So yeah, I don't know. Teach me, guys. Teach me. I'm willing to learn. I am your student, okay? All right, 65 Creedmoor, 762 NATO. Both of the rounds I actually thoroughly enjoy shooting quite a bit, but I don't have a 65 Creedmoor in my safe yet yet. However, Nemo, if you're watching this, that executive order was sweet, and if you want to send one my way, I would totally be okay with that, just doing it out there. Anyway, all right, guys, I'm going to leave the video off there. Check out our current giveaway, by the way. Right now, our current giveaway is something a little bit larger than both of these guys. It is 338 Lapua, and it is the FN ballista if you want distance <laughs> if you want serious distance it's with this guy right here i've got the trigicon on here guys this is a 3 to 18 by 44 trigicon 10 mile i think it is and uh 26 inch barrel on this Ooh, buddy it comes with a eight round and a five round mag bolt action magazine fed semi-auto precision sniper rifle rifle if you will all right this is a precision rifle precision shooter here uh, all you need is a monopod and a bipod and you'll be ready to rock and roll all right but yeah guys this is our current giveaway and uh no purchase necessary to win you get this guy for free from us so head on over to classicfirearms.com click on that top banner on our home page and you'll see right there where you can go to all of these different links and everything else to get multiple entries for you to win uh like I said, no purchase necessary, and all it takes is one entry to win. It's not who has the most, it's just that one lucky entry. All right, guys? So, again, head on over to ClassicFirearms.com, get this guy. I'll see you guys down in the comments section. Looking forward to see you guys, all you 762 traditionalists out there versus all you 65 lovers. I want to see you guys duking it out, having a good time, and being respectful, of course. I look forward to seeing it. Guys, God bless you all, and we'll see you next time at ClassicFirearms.com.